We are ready to go with another In the Kitchen with Paul and Jamie. I know, and this one was two weeks in the making. Yes, this is one of the first times that we actually made it first and now we're making it a second time and we've got some adjustments to do. So Judy's gonna give the ingredients, but we did make some modifications. It was delicious, well, don't get me first wrong. First we should also say that it's lettuce wraps from right. DF Chang's and we did modify it. But also, guess whose apron won the first apron? Thank you. First apron and second apron. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun, though. This is a fun one. It's a good one. It's delicious. It's going to be part of our regular stable now, I think, yes. of meals. We ready to talk about what we sure. need? Sure. Okay. It. Tell you what. You call it off, and I'll show it. Does that sound okay. good? Okay. All right. All right. So we need a, a chicken breast. Yes. And you want it to be partially thawed. We'll explain that in a minute. They do talk about having a pound of chicken mm -hmm. breast. Um, I don't know if ours is exactly a pound. It's a very, very big chicken breast, right. so I think it'll be enough. A well-endowed chicken. Yes. Um, we have uh, five ounces of shiitake mushrooms. Yes, and that happens to be pre-measured, so we're just gonna use the whole thing. An eight ounce can of water chestnuts. And there are the water chestnuts, and we need to drain the can of any of the water in there, so that's already been done. It says a, table of, a, a tablespoon of garlic mince, but we use the actual clove and we Mince and a it. tablespoon ends up being two cloves, yeah. so we'll use two cloves of the real garlic. You need a cup of cold water, or yes. a half a cup. Half a cup of water. Or is water. it a quarter cup? I can't see that. <laughs> it is a quarter, quarter cup. cup. Yep. Uh, two tablespoons of soy sauce. And we need soy sauce. Two tablespoons right. of oyster sauce. And get the oyster sauce. Two tablespoons of mirin sauce, which is a sweet cooking uh, white wine. Okay. Okay. Yummy. Rice wine, I should say. Uh, and where are we now? Oh, the hoisin sauce. I have uh, yep. three tablespoons, it looks like, of that. All right. One tablespoon of sugar. Yes, and everybody has their own sort of sugar uh, compilation <laughs> or container. <laughs> so that's our little sugar container. We need a teaspoon of cornstarch. Cornstarch. Uh, one and a half tablespoons of grapeseed oil. Yes. And a half tablespoon of sesame oil. Yes, so there's the sesame oil you're gonna need. Uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt and pepper. We just do that to taste with our, our, uh, our fresh grinders. Fresh grinders. Mm -hmm. Salt okay. and pepper. Uh, actually, we don't need uh, the four green onions. Yes. So we just bought a package of those and we'll take four out. I'm going to chop the whole things all the way down. Okay. The only thing we forgot was the ginger. So we are going to need a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger. I think mm -hmm. that's right. Correct. No, one tablespoon of ginger. And it did, it did say to use fresh ginger, but the fresh ginger is this big, looks like almost a placemat. Like a tree trunk. Right. And I, <laughs> you know, I thought, well, um, we would never use All that enough, enough to, to So we're just going to use the spice we're version. We're going to use the spice version. You also need lettuce mm -hmm. and it calls for either a bib lettuce or a butter butter lettuce butter. we kind of like just the regular regular iceberg, iceberg lettuce and it has a nice crunch to it so we did that and then we're also adapting <clears throat> it to add in some cashews we felt like it needed a little bit more crunch and we thought that would be a nice addition and then chef paul was the, inspired chef paul was inspired so we're going to also have <laughs> peanut sauce and hot mustard but we're going to use those as almost dipping sauces after the lettuce wraps are already made. Can I do one disclaimer? Yes, you may. Um, when I was giving you the amounts in the teaspoons, oh yes, it might have added some of the what's going to be in a filling sauce. We decided we're not going to do the filling sauce. Yeah. So when we we'll, did it the last time, it made it a little bit too, too soupy, soupy yeah. um, too wet. So we decided, I guess that's the benefit of having done it once and then making our own adapt adaptations. And as we go through measuring again, I'll remind you of what all those exact measurements all right, are. All right, now we're gonna divide and conquer now. Okay. So I'm going to go with the chicken breast. Okay. And I wanna remind everybody, it should be partially thawed or partially frozen. Okay. Because you wanna cut it into very small cubes. Mm -hmm. And I found out firsthand, if it gets thawed too much, it can be a little dangerous with a knife. So yes. you want it to be... And you don't want the chicken to pull. You just want it to be able to cut. Right. And make sure you have a very, very, very sharp knife. What did it say? It said to either have the chicken thawed in the refrigerator Correct. and then get it out and put it in the freezer for a half an hour before you cut it. Or it said, oh yeah, that's perfect. I, I want you to see that because it, this knife cut right through that. Yep. So it's going to be safer for me and I'm going to work quickly this okay. time okay. to get as much done as I can. Okay. That sounds good. So I'll start chopping up the shiitake mushrooms, and then also the water chestnuts. 
that once again was five ounces of the shiitake mushrooms, one full eight ounce can of the drained water chestnuts. And the reason we have all of these other things out here is because you're going to need a bowl for mixing the sauce, the filling sauce, and then another bowl for setting the chicken aside before it's ready to be cooked. So all of those things are necessary. You're going to need, I think if you have a couple sets of measuring spoons, and we'll put what we use in the below the video as far as what we like to use in our kitchen in case you want some uh, buying ideas for your kitchen. But I really like the idea of having a couple sets of tablespoons uh, or actually teaspoons and tablespoons because some of the ingredients that you're measuring are dry and some of them are wet and it's difficult when you're trying to go back and forth from one to the other going from say a dry measure to then a wet measure. Well, I don't know Stirrers. if you can see this, Judy, but mm -hmm. I, I want you to see what it looks like when you can cut, cut them in really small. Okay. Like oh, that. wow. You're making yeah. them really tiny. Yeah. Okay. Great. And if you have any excess sort of gristle, I'm just cutting it off because I don't need gristle in my life. <laughs> now, the secret is as you're cutting these really small, it's going to start to thaw a little bit faster. If it's not fully thawed by the time you're supposed to start cooking it. They recommend you put it in a plastic bag of just water to help it thaw a little bit, but I think we're gonna be fine on this. Okay, and your mushrooms are now cut. Yay. So we'll just set those aside because they'll come in later after the chicken has been cooked on its own. Then the next thing, remember, drain the can of the water chestnuts and then they get chopped up as well. Probably not as small as the Paul is slicing the chicken, <laughs> but I'm impressed. That must have been the perfect amount of thawed chicken for you to be able yes. to do it. Yes, and, and, and again, you have to be cognizant that it's thawing as you go. Yes. So not to rush and cut off a finger, but it's going to get, excuse the pun, dicier <laughs> as you try and cut this chicken into small bits when it starts to thaw. Maybe I'll borrow this one from you. Okay. And that way I can just mash and then cut. Because you said that when you do this, yeah, it, uh, releases, it also helps release the oils and flavors. But also makes the skin easier to get off. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. It just kind of falls off at that point. Okay, perfect. Oh, I can smell that garlic flavor <laughs> released as soon as I did that. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Mm-hmm. Smells fantastic. Yeah, anytime you can get fresh, that's the way to go. That is potent garlic, I'll mm -hmm. tell you that. I love, Yummy. <laughs> love the fresh garlic. We just love the fresh garlic. Okay, so garlic is minced. Um, water chestnuts are cut. Shiitake mushrooms are cut. Next, we're going to be taking the quarter cup of cold water, the soy sauce, oyster sauce, mirin sauce, hoisin sauce, the sugar and the starch, and those are all gonna be mixed together as one of the filling sauces and set aside. So I'll put all those, the amounts of those ingredients um, in front of you as I'm measuring that as well. So first is that quarter cup of water. And I'm still gonna measure the ginger, but that's gonna go in with these things here. So I think I'll wait to measure that because it's a tablespoon of ginger and it'll just sit there and go all over the place. All right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty where it's gonna be a little bit difficult. Okay quarter cup of cold water, and it does say specifically cold. Then we need soy sauce, and in that case, it is two tablespoons of soy sauce. So I'm gonna designate this one as my dry measuring spoons, and this one as my wet measuring spoons. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. Now you can see why we like to divide cook together, <laughs> divide, divide and conquer, conquer, as you say. All righty. After that, two tablespoons of the oyster sauce. And that's this guy, oyster flavored sauce. I 
this one's a little bit thicker, as I recall, than the soy. Yes. Almost like a plum sauce. That was two tablespoons of the oyster sauce, two tablespoons of mirin. And if you haven't heard of mirin, that's what Paul called the sweet cooking rice wine sauce. I don't know what else you might use it in. Where did you find, by the way, all of these different sauces? Was there um, a certain Asian section of the there, grocery there's store? There's an Asian section, believe it or not, in uh, the Walmart stores. Oh. However, it's not really well marked. It's in this, and I think that they're going uh, pretty much uh, nationwide with the same, because they just redid our store. So they're going to, it'll probably be the same. It's where you can find pretty much on the big sign you'll see for like Hispanic oh, yeah. food. Uh -huh. And at the end of that is a Asian food section. Oh, okay. And, uh, they had some of the sauces, not all of them that I wanted. Mm -hmm. I did have to go to, uh, I believe, our local Publix. Okay. I'm all right, so I left off at two tablespoons of the Mirin Sweet Cooking Rice Wine Sauce. So now we need three tablespoons of the Hoisin Sauce. So this, obviously, all wet ingredients, but then we're going to get into the sugar and the cornstarch. So that's where you're going to need the dry uh, teaspoon, tablespoon All right, one, situation. One uh, last comment I will make about your chicken mm -hmm. that you've now diced up pretty well. Um, you want, <coughs> excuse me, you want to make sure that it's full. Here's your little squares. I want to show it to these other ones. Um, and they say it's smaller than you've ever cut chicken before. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be thawing on its own. I'm spreading it out a little bit from each other a little bit because some of them have the little frozen spots because you don't want to cook the chicken frozen. But I don't think that it is frozen enough that I feel a need to, to put it in a plastic put it in bag. A bag. Yeah. Right. This is the third tablespoon of the hoisin sauce. What a busy bee you have been. I know. Look at all this progress. <laughs> it looks awesome. <laughs> All right, so I left off at the three tablespoons of the hoisin sauce. So now we get into the dry ingredients, although you probably need my help with the grapeseed oil and the sesame That's oil, correct. right? Okay. And for that, you need one and a half tablespoons of grapeseed oil, which is this guy. Mm -hmm. They they're refer to that as a neutral oil, but it also is a high heat oil. Would you like me to put that right in yep. there? Okay. I'm not going to bother with using the half. I'm just going to eyeball half sure. of a tablespoon. <laughs> That's the way we cook with oil anyway. We just, yeah. boom. Pour it in there. And then our sesame seed oil. Okay. And that was a half a tablespoon of the sesame oil. Half a tablespoon, so not quite the full thing. There we go. Okay, good. Feeling good about it? I'm feeling fantastic. <laughs> May I move this? Sure. Okay. Yes. Well, it's, um, and again, we're using a cast iron. The recommend, recommendation is to use a wok. Yes. We don't have a wok. Next best is your uh, cast iron skillets because they can go to very, very high heats, very high extremes. The chicken is the first thing we're doing. Yes. In here. Okay. That's right. Just waiting for it to come up to temperature. Yep. And then the <clears throat> four green onions, we're going to use the whole thing. Perfect amount. Then of course you have the lettuce for wrapping everything in. This so, already smells so good. <laughs> just so you guys know, Sometimes I know it's probably hard to follow a little bit, even though I like to put the information at the bottom of the screen, but the ingredients and the directions are also down in the description below the video. So if you want to refer to those in the exact amounts, feel free to be able to do that. Are you ready for some magic? Magic, yes. Okay. I'll tell you what, I really, really like the smell of that sesame seed oil. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're about two to three minutes on this phase. And then we're going to set that chicken aside. If it gets to a point where it's popping up a little too much, if you have one of those, um, those covers that you can put on to keep it from splattering, you can use that as well. But you, you're cooking it for such a short period of time that there's not a lot of time to put the cover on because yeah. you want to keep stirring it. It really, it really smells amazing already. I feel like we're right in the C.F. Chang's kitchen. Watching the action. Mm -hmm. In the, in the true Chinese restaurants, so don't you have to say, I want number like 62? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Combined with 13 and then a little side of four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the green onions are all chopped and ready to go. Now I wanna make sure in cheating about this. <laughs> Add the diced chicken, assemble a filling sauce, small bowl, quarter cup of cold water, two tablespoons soy, two tablespoons oyster, two tablespoons mirin, three tablespoons hoisin, one tablespoon sugar, and one teaspoon cornstarch. So let's do that too. All right, I am going to just get <clears throat> one tablespoon sugar, a spoon. That will help me get that chicken out of there. Oh, do I have one you could use here? Would this help? Yeah, I think something like this will okay. be a little bit. And one teaspoon All right. of the cornstarch. I'm taking it out after two minutes, maybe two minutes and 15 seconds, because it looks done to me. And it does tell you in the instructions two to three minutes. And depending on how good of a job you do, Cutting really small pieces of chicken that's going to cook faster. I'm going to get ready with my wet measure because he's going to need now more of the grapeseed oil and sesame oil. So keep the heat on medium high, mm -hmm. add another tablespoon of the neutral oil, which is, as a reminder, your grapeseed mm -hmm. in, in this case. Do you remember what the other one was uh, that they gave I, as an I option? Think a, I think a corn oil. Uh, is semi-neutral. There was another one. I can't remember what it was. No, because we took it off of our recipe, so we, yes. would, we wouldn't be confused. Okay, so now what are we doing? Oh. So you keep the heat on medium mm -hmm. high. We've added the tablespoon of the neutral oil, mm -hmm. grapeseed, and a teaspoon of the sesame oil. When hot, add in the mushrooms and water chestnuts. Yep. Saute for two to three minutes. Set okay. Set my little timer again. Alrighty. We'll put those in when you're ready mushrooms and water chestnuts, but not the garlic quite yet. Okay. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And don't not take the garlic. The garlic. Okay. No. Being stingy with the garlic, I'm being you? stingy with the garlic. I'm holding out on you. <laughs> you got it. There's one, one little stray water chestnut. <laughs> right. Now you sounded like me. <laughs> okay. So you're going to saute that for two to three minutes. Then we're going to add in the tablespoon of garlic and the tablespoon of ginger. There we go. Probably not going to be quite as easy to melt in there. You ready for me to add a little bit sure. of this? You need a little bit more oil? No, this is where we made a mistake the last time. Okay, good. Because uh, we're adding your filling sauce in there, is that correct? Yes, we are. So we made the mistake the first time. As a, as a chef, every time that I am cooking something, I, I'm always pretty liberal with the olive oil or butter if I'm doing the steak. And uh, <clears throat> then we found out it was a little bit too soupy. Now you're ready for your garlic. Because after two to three minutes of sauteing the mushrooms and water chestnuts by themselves, add in the ginger and the garlic. All right. After you've cooked in the garlic and mm -hmm. the ginger, then you're going to return the chicken and any juices that are sitting in the chicken back into this pan with all of the other uh, vegetable goodness. Lower the heat to medium, which I'll do for you okay. here. 
and cook for another two minutes. Chop the green onions, check. Set aside a small amount to add to the meal as a fresh garnish. Now that's completely up to you. I think I just throw them all in myself. Mm. <laughs> Uh, add the remaining green onions to the pan, saute for another one to two minutes, and remove from the heat. At this point, we're also going to add in uh, the cashews. Mm. We wanted to add those last so that still had a really good crunch. Okay, you ready, sir? I'm ready. First hit, apron. Hit me. <laughs> hit me second apron. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, I'm just going to put them all in there. I hope you're okay with that. Totally, I'm okay with that. Garnish, marnish. We love our onions. <laughs> <laughs> you had to run away? I had to run away. Okay. And you tell me then, oh, and when did this go in? The filling sauce? Yeah. Cook the filling sauce. Once the pan is very hot, add that, add that. Add the diced chicken, constantly stirring. Season with the, oh, did you season with the salt and pepper? Nope, didn't. We always forgot that part. Yeah, okay. Two to three minutes to cook. It's never a bad time, <laughs> honestly, Okay. when you're doing it, whether it's before, during, after. All right, and let's stir together, set aside. Oh, this is part of what we're supposed to dip, I think. So I remember this was a lot of filling sauce. So may I add just a sure. teeny? because I think that's going to add a lot of flavor without making it too terribly wet. And then we determined we were going to kind of do the cashews eyeballing it. But let's say anywhere from a quarter to half a cup. You ready for those? Oh, I think this is a good addition. Now, obviously, if you have a peanut allergy or a <laughs> nut allergy, you're not going to want to so do good. this this step. But, but you're going to have a little extra crunch. Oh, yeah. That looks amazing. So what I'll do now, so this is going to be our, a little more. Because okay, okay, okay. okay. I think we're going to want it in with the flavor yeah, of that. Exactly. And there's quite a lot left. So we can still use it as a dipping sauce, along with the peanut sauce and the mm -hmm. hot mustard that you have. And now I think I will get the lettuce ready. So we can remove this from the heat now. OK. And of course, being that cast iron skillet, it will be continuing to be very warm. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. So, we could use two plates. Two plates. Yes. It's a matter of like, where do we put them? <laughs> well, I can start getting rid of some of the stuff over here as well. And I'll keep it as together as I can. That is a huge wrap. It's a little bit of a while. Okay, there's another one. Oh, sorry. So they're pretty large pieces. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you feel like you'd want to take them down, but it's definitely going to roll pretty well up in there. Okay, I think I'm going to use that wooden spoon you have. Cool. I think it'll be more dry. You may have just fill yours too. <gasps> oh, it looks so good. I'm dripping it everywhere. No, you're doing fine. amazing. I don't want to make it so large that it's difficult to wrap. But don't worry. Leave it there. No. Oh, you want to wrap it? Oh, yeah. I'll okay. wrap it there. You know how I did with the shrimp? <laughs> that would be the bacon wrapped shrimp. Yes. I can always put that in the upper right hand corner. I too. was fired from wrapping the That bacon. was such a funny video. <laughs> okay. Seconds will be Yes. Forthcoming. Yes. Let me get this out of the way. I'll just we'll clean that up later. OK. 
Okay, so there's the I lettuce to, wrap. I'd want them to see what it looks like yeah. in there. Okay. <laughs> and then also, you want to add a little bit of your peanut sauce. Sure. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm going to shake it up again real well. Okay. It's going to be a hot sauce. <clears throat> oh, do you want it right on oh, there? Oh yeah, totally. No more. It's gonna be a little spicy. The, the peanut sauce? Mm-hmm. Oh, that looks so good. Yeah. Oh yeah, it smells good too. It's clearing up my sinuses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well? Well, do we try it? I don't, it's too messy to eat on the camera, but we'll tell you how it was. <laughs> We're going to go sit down like uh, human beings and eat it. <laughs> okay. Uh, but this is a, it's a delicious dish. We really, really love this. And, I don't know um, if you can see beyond and, all my lettuce. Me, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now I'm going to wrap it and now I'm going to eat it. Okay. See you next time for In the Kitchen with Paul and Judy. This has been the, our version of P.F. Chang's lettuce wraps. Chicken lettuce wraps, right. Bon appetit. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Do we have any funny things? Any outtakes? <laughs> Nothing? I don't know. Uh. I don't think so. <laughs>